we use diagrams to do that, specifically like rectangle diagrams, because with the other examples we've seen so far, it tends to be something you can recognize, like what operations to do and where. If you already know that the distributive property is this, where you take the outside number and multiply it by both of the inside numbers, then great. Maybe you don't need to make a diagram, um, but there are some visual learners out there. So this can help. And maybe if you never understood it before, this will help. So if I was trying to show that this expression, and I'll use numbers because that tends to be easier, that this is equal to three times the sum of x and four, I could use this diagram to show that. So the side length that they have in common would be the three. And then the other terms that are in the parentheses could go on the diagram like this. Because if I wanted this entire side length, I would just add these two together. I'd have x plus four, which is the same thing as multiplying them individually. So like, how do you find the area of a rectangle? length times width. So if we're trying to find the area of the smaller rectangle, what's three times x? And then of this, I said smaller maybe. What about this smaller rectangle, three times four? Twelve is the area for this smaller rectangle. And if I want the area of the whole thing, I just add those areas together, which would be the same thing as if I did the distributive property where I did three times this entire sine length, three times x is three x, three times four is 12. Okay, so that was basically the gist today. You could use an area diagram to help you with the distributive property if that helps you or if you know how to do your distributive property. Um, we also saw what it looked like when there are two term expressions being multiplied together. And I'll continue with like the A, B, C, D just for this example. Just because A, B, C, D could be any number. But there's lots of methods. I think knowing it as double distributing might be helpful or foiling or you can make another bigger diagram. But at some point you probably stopped using the diagrams. So I'll show you the double distributing. Um, that is a famous foil in if you do like that method, where you take the first term, multiply it by both of the terms in the other parentheses, and then take the second term, multiply it by both terms in the other parentheses. And then what you get, you have to do A times C, which is AC, or if they're numbers, multiply the numbers. A times D, which is AD, and then distribute the B now. B times C is what class? BC, good, don't overthink it. B times D is BD. So it's like whatever you get from multiplying those. And then the only other key thing that I think might be confusing sometimes that you guys sometimes forget is if you have an X times an X, what is it equal? If you have a P times a P, what is it equal? Um, I don't know. A W times a W, what is it equal? So don't forget that little piece of it. So for some of you, it might feel like I'm throwing a lot of things at you. I'll make sure to leave these notes up, but please talk to me like the comments I will you. I know not all of you have had the lesson yet today, so that's another factor that could play into your confusion. But you do have a practice, and I imagine since class ends at like what, 8.30? I'll have to check if it's 8.30 or 8.35. I imagine that you should still be able to get at least one attempt turned in. 
you might have time to ask me questions from that attempt, or we just might have to do those questions tomorrow. But please feel free to ask as you go. Any questions right now? Okay, I'm going to go back to the other screen because it has uh, more of the notes. Or I guess it doesn't. So I'll just leave it on the screen now with the notes. But please reach out if you need to. 